and welcome to Hindustan Foods Limited Q2 FY23 earnings conference call. This conference call may contain forward-looking statements about the company which are based on the beliefs, opinions and expectations of the company as on date of this call. These statements are not the guarantees of future performance and involve risk and uncertainties that are difficult to predict. As a reminder, all participant lines will be in the listen-only mode and there will be an opportunity for you to ask questions after the presentation concludes. Should you need assistance during the conference call, please signal an operator by pressing star and then zero on your touchstone phone. Please note that this conference is being recorded. I now hand the conference over to Mr. Samir Kothari, Managing Director. Thank you and over to you, sir. Thank you, Mike, and good morning, everyone. Uh, welcome to our Q2 H1 FY23 earnings conference call. I am joined on the call by Ganesh Argekar, who is the Executive Director of our company, Mr. Mayank Samdani, who is CFO, uh, Mr. Vimal Solanki, who is the Head of Corporate Communications, and SGA, our Investor Relations Advisor. I hope everyone has had a chance to go through our updated earnings presentation, which was uploaded on the Stock Exchange and our company website. Overall, I am pleased with the performance of the second quarter and the half year ended FY23. The company has been able to grow both in terms of revenues as well as profits, uh, despite the challenging conditions in the SMCG market. The financial numbers of our acquisitions and new subsidiaries have started getting consolidated in the numbers according in the numbers and accordingly I believe that on the consolidated numbers would be more reflective of the performance of the company rather than the standalone numbers. We do believe that the slowdown of the SMCG demand and the inflationary pressure will lead to our customers rethinking about their manufacturing strategies and exploit of outsourcing more. And this will lead to a better growth prospect for us in the medium and the long term. So on a related note, as a part of strengthening our core professional team, I'm happy to share that Mr. Sunil Plakar has been recruited as the president of Turing Excellence. Mr. Plakar is a chemical engineer with long years of experience in manufacturing operations in plant and corporate roles across companies like Asian Paints and Atul Limited. I will now hand over the call to Ganesh Agekar, our Executive Director, to brief you on the operational highlights. Good morning, everyone. I would like to highlight the operational performance of Q2 and H1 uh, FI23. The newly integrated color cosmetic division and racket linkage of Shaw India Private Lim uh, uh, Limited have successfully started contributing to the top line. The wholly owned subsidiary HFL Consumer Products has successfully commercialized the ice cream plant in Uttar Pradesh, Lucknow. While it has started commercial production, it has not contributed significantly to the revenue, this being a lean season. However, it has appeared to cater to the strong demand of the upcoming peak season. Additionally, we have expanded the capacity in beverage plant in Mysuru and we are ready for the upcoming beverage season starting for Q4 this year. Uh, the project uh, work at Hyderabad Board of uh, Soap Bar Project and the expansion package are progressing well as per the scheduled timeline. I will now hand over the call to Mayan Sandani or Group CFO to take you to the financial results of the quarter ended 30th June 2022. Good morning, everybody. We post strong numbers this quarter and we are tracked to meet our annual estimates. As Samir mentioned, we will be discussing consolidated numbers as they are more meaningful than the standard numbers this, this now on. Our so far the quarter increased by 40.7% on a year basis to rupees 663 crores in Q2 and FY23 as to rupees 471 crores in Q2 and FY22. For H1 and FY23, revenue stood at rupees 1262.3 crores, a growth of 35.2% over HY1 FY22. EBITDA for the quarter has seen a growth of 49% year on year and stood at rupees 44 crores as against 29.6 crores in Q2 FY22. Profit grew by 73.73% year on year to rupees 18.9 crores as, as compared to rupees 10.9 crores in Q2 FY22. EPS for H1 FY22 stood at rupees 3 versus 1.86 in H1 FY22. As on September 30th, 2022, our net worth is 78 crores. Gross block as on 30th September 
stood at around 708 crores on account of consolidation and our debt to equity ratio remains steady at the comfortable position of 1 is to 1.1. 1 we reintegrate our near term and the long term targets for revenue and profitability as we continue to focus on accelerating growth through exploring organic and inorganic, inorganic opportunities. With this, we also remain focused on strengthening our balance sheet and cash flow through effective capital management, with, which would facilitate us for the further growth. With this, I would like to open floor for the questions. Thank you. Thank you. We will now begin the question answer session. Participants who wish to ask a question may press star and one on your touchstone telephone. If you wish to remove yourself from the question queue, you may press star and two. Participants are requested to use handsets while asking a question. Ladies and gentlemen, we will wait for a moment while the question queue assembles. We have the first question on the line of Faisal Hawa from HG Hawa and Company. Please go ahead. Uh, yeah. So, what is the kind of opportunity we are seeing with uh, you know private label uh, manufacturing? Faisal, this is the operator here. Would request to kindly yeah. come on the handset mode because yes, your sir. voice is not clearly yes. audible. I'm sorry. Uh, so, what is the kind of opportunity we are seeing with uh, you know private label uh, operators like DMART or Reliance? Uh, you know, and uh, what what percentage of sales uh, do we see you know com going forward uh, from them? And uh, do we see any kind of opportunity coming up from you know exports to uh, Unilever or even to record record going forward? Good morning, Faisal. Uh, as I've mentioned before, private label is a very interesting category for us. Uh, in the last quarter, we've uh, begun some with DMART as well as Reliance. Uh, while as a percentage of the business, private label will continue to be a very very small part of the business. Uh, for the next few years, but from a strategic perspective, we are keenly uh, looking at this sector and working very closely, uh, not only with the large uh, uh, retail players like DMART and but also with uh, uh, D2C brands uh, as well as e-commerce players. Uh, so yes, private label is very important to us, uh, but from a financial perspective, it's still continuing to be uh, a rounding of error on the uh, entire balance sheet. In terms of exports. Uh, you are aware that the uh, Racket Benchies of Shoal facility that we acquired uh, is a 100% uh, EOU. Uh, it is catering to nearly 20 uh, affiliates of erstwhile Racket Benchies and now Shoal Wellness Company uh, located in Europe as well as Japan and Australia. Uh, we believe uh, that we will be able to expand that business further. Uh, we are working closely with Shoal. Sanjay and I actually visited them in UK as well. Uh, to try and see what else got into this factory and uh, also brought into India uh, in terms of the shawl portfolio uh, internationally. Uh, in addition to that, uh, we are also exporting uh, some stuff from our Jammu factory uh, to Bangladesh and other uh, South Asian countries uh, where we are exporting coils, etc. Uh, and the shoe business, as you are aware, that completely exports as well. So exports continue to be a focus area, uh, but again, as a part of the financial number, uh, they will be a very, very small number for the next couple of years. Uh, and uh, like you know, just just like Varun Beverages has done, but is it possible that we ever get into you know the entire uh, you know even uh, uh, CNF distribution uh, for uh, any of these large companies that we are associated with? Because most of these companies, you know, want to now concentrate on marketing and branding. So, you know, anybody who takes this uh, load off their shoulders would be would, would get a lot of business. Sezal, I'm not sure that's the model for FMCG players. The bottling industry, as far as uh, uh, soft drinks and, and uh, beverages is concerned, works slightly differently as compared to the FMCG industry. The bottling worldwide follows the same model which PepsiCo is following in India and Coke also follows in India. Uh, however, FMCG companies do strongly believe that distribution is a very, very strong component of their competitive mode. And as a result, I really doubt uh, that companies like ITC or HUL or Record Benchisa will give up uh, their competitive uh, advantage in terms of distribution to people like us. 
Uh, now, coming to us, we are very clear that our strength lies in manufacturing. Uh, we are very clear that we are a B2B company. We have very little experience in dealing with B2C. Uh, and given the potential that we see for growth, at least in the next three to four years, in the field that we are doing, I don't see us buying uh, very much away from what we are doing. Okay, thanks a lot. Thank you, Feather. Thank you. Participants who wish to ask a question may press star and one on your touchstone telephone. We have the next question for the line of Abhinish Roy from Novama Institutional Equities. Please go ahead. Yeah, thanks. Uh, congrats on a very good set of numbers. Uh, I have uh, three questions. So first is, uh, what would be the organic uh, growth rate like-to-like, uh, -like, uh, given you have a few uh, new businesses in the sense color cosmetics, call and ice cream? If we take this out, uh, what would be the like-to-like -like, uh, YOI growth? So, uh, me, uh, I, I'll have to take a minute to explain to you the, the business model uh, that we have. Nearly 80 to 85 percent of our business comes from dedicated factories. And in case of dedicated factories, we actually reach our peak capacities within three to six months of the startup of the factory. Uh, once that has been achieved, we have very little operating, uh, which basically means that on a steady state basis, uh, a factory will deliver a similar kind of volume and value uh, throughout the course of the contract, which could be as long as 10 or 12 years. Uh, so on a like-to-like -like basis, uh, we will continue to see the same number from an existing factory subject to inflation numbers. And again, as far as inflation is concerned, you are aware that uh, uh, you, you probably are not aware, but our business model is that of a pass-through, uh, which means uh, that even the inflation numbers, while it will affect our sales numbers, uh, it does not affect our bottom lines. So our bottom lines are protected against inflation. So as a result, if you look at steady to, uh, on a steady state basis or a same three sales growth basis, uh, the number that we have today will be the number we will have for the next 10 years. No, two things here. Uh, one is, uh, why don't you build much larger factories to start with, uh, given these are very long-term contracts? So that was one question I wanted to understand. Second is, say, if uh, one of your uh, clients has seen an X percent uh, price growth uh, in this quarter, I'm not taking any names for the obvious reasons, but uh, from that client also, will you see almost similar X percent kind of price growth for yourself? Is it normally very co correlated? Okay, so the first question, I'll again uh, try a little bit detailing of our business models. So we have two types of uh, models. One is dedicated factories, uh, where we build factories to suit. Uh, in this case, uh, the, the customer comes to us and tells us exactly what size of the factory they want, what processes they want, what kind of machines they want, etc. And as a result, there we do not have any discretion in terms of building larger factories or factories. We build them exactly to the size of the customer. This works in our favor, especially when it comes to larger investments, because then we have zero operating risk. Uh, whatever is the capacity which is guaranteed by our principal is what is built and that is guaranteed right from uh, pretty much day one of our commercial production. In case of our second model of niche, uh, where we do shared facilities, you are absolutely right that given the growth that we believe FMCG in India can uh, achieve, uh, we are investing in larger facilities. If you look at our updates for this quarter, we've mentioned that we are uh, uh, upping the capacity, we are investing some money in Mysuru, which is a shared facility which we acquired and we are doing that because the last season of beverages was excellent for all the companies. Uh, we believe that the next season we will ourselves see a substantial growth and as a result we are increasing the capacity more than 40%. So in terms of building large factories, uh, we do that for the shared manufacturing models uh, where we have that operating leverage where we can increase uh, the capacity basis of that. In case of dedicated factories, however, the discretion about the size and the capacity is not with us. Coming in terms of the, uh, uh, the price inflation, uh, you're absolutely right that uh, this quarter and the last quarter, uh, a lot of uh, 
the FMCG customers of ours have seen price rises. However, uh, what you have to understand is the price rise that you look at from a customer's perspective is got to do with their uh, sales realization. So which means they are talking about the price increases which they have taken vis-a-vis -vis the customer. Uh, maybe an increase in the uh, MRPs or a decrease in the volumes. Uh, however, in case of us as a manufacturer, our sales has got to do with the manufacturing cost and our manufacturing cost will increase or decrease directly in proportion with the commodity price inflation in the commodity uh, world. So it may not be completely correlated to, uh, let's say, the uh, price rise uh, that our FMCG customers take. Does that answer your question? Uh, only partly, because see, one is again coming back to a dedicated factory. If uh, it becomes almost fully utilized in say six months, so is there a uh, possibility that you can add one more line because uh, clearly FNCG companies are also seeing four five percent uh, volume CAGR over longer term. Currently, they are not seeing. But uh, is there is there a possibility of adding one more line in existing, or normally that is not the case? Oh, absolutely. That's that, that, that's very true. Uh, and we have uh, various examples to do that. So, for example, in case of Hyderabad, we started off uh, with only a, a detergent powder factory. We've uh, installed there a liquid manufacturing facility. And now we're doing a soap bar facility. To give you the size of uh, the expansion, we've gone from something like 60,000 tons to more than 200,000 tons now. And it's going to go up further. Uh, the same thing uh, in our recent quarterly update, we've announced that in case of ice creams, uh, we are nearly doubling our capacity expansion. Uh, we are uh, we had invested close to uh, 125 crores uh, in uh, this facility, uh, and we are now investing a further 100 crores in that facility. So from that perspective, you are absolutely right. Uh, when we look at uh, factories, we tend to buy larger plots of land, uh, which allow us the expansion capability. Uh, maybe I misunderstood your question, but uh, what I was what I was saying is that we would invest only under the complete commitment of our principal. While we would probably have the scope for expansion, we wouldn't do that expansion unless our principal underwrites it. Sure. Uh, now, <clears throat> well understood. My second question is on the uh, board level uh, development. Uh, so, Mr. Dempo stepping down as chairman and the independent director Sashi taking over as the uh, uh, chairman in his uh, replacement. Uh, what is the reason, uh, what is the significance, if at all, and uh, any color you would like to give? How does this change from a medium long-term perspective, if at all? So frankly, it doesn't change anything. Mr. Dempo has been, uh, he's a promoter of the company, and as you know, he's been a chairman of the company since 1999. Uh, Shashi, on the other hand, has also been with us uh, for nearly, uh, I forget the exact number, but I think he's been a director for four or five years now. He's an independent director, he's a professional, comes from the FMCG industry. Uh, as we look at professionalizing our board and our company further, uh, the board just decided that, that we should rotate the chairmanship uh, and have Shashi come in uh, uh, as well. Uh, Mr. Dempo continues to be uh, the uh, uh, director of the company, and as I mentioned, he's also uh, a co-promoter with us. Sure. Uh, last question was on the previous participant question on uh, export. So you mentioned next couple of years, it may not change uh, dramatically. So my question is, uh, one, after two years, uh, uh, is there lack of visibility or there, there are reasons to believe it will scale up? Second, just like many other uh, categories, not just FMCG, is there a China plus one and EU plus one uh, option for you also or uh, that's too uh, currently low probability? Uh, in fact, the probability is very high. Uh, uh, China plus one should happen definitely in case of FMCG as well. Uh, I have mentioned this before in my investor interactions that unfortunately the ecosystem for FMCG exports out of the country is not very well developed. Uh, that's the reason why we mentioned that it might take a couple of years. In some cases uh, like pharma, OTC, health and wellness, uh, we will see it happening sooner rather than later. In case of FMCG products which require a very robust uh, ecosystem for plastic molding and uh, plastic injection molding, uh, we might require a cut for the ecosystem to develop, uh, thereby allowing us to export. Uh, to give you a specific example, uh, which I have quoted before, but 
Uh, I'll, I'll, I'll mention it again that in times of COVID, uh, one of the main reasons why India could not manufacture enough hand sanitizers and hand washers was because we did not have the capacity uh, to make any pumps and flip-top caps. Uh, you'd be surprised to know that uh, a large percentage of pumps in India are actually imported from China. So in a, in a situation like this, for us to be able to position ourselves as an exporter uh, in place of China would require that the plastic uh, uh, manufacturing capacity and the plastic injection molding capacity uh, has to be much better developed. Uh, I think a lot of uh, action is happening in the packaging industry as well. A lot of consolidation is happening there and a lot of capital is being allocated. Uh, I think in the next couple of years, you will see uh, things changing. Sure, thanks. Uh, the, that's all for my side. Uh, thank you. Thank you, Avnish. Thank you. We have the next question on the line of Ajay Thakur from Anandrati. Please go ahead. Hi, sir. Thanks for taking my question and congrats on a good set of number. So, just wanted to understand first uh, on the margins front, uh, we have seen a bit of a margin improvement. Uh, any specific reason for the same? Is there a kind of a mix improvement that is going through there? which is helping in terms of the margin or, uh, you know, is it just because of the aero scare and the shawl unit getting, you know, kind of uh, merged into, which is helping our better margins? Ajay, I'm going to request Mayam to take this question. Ajay, you are absolutely right. The, the margin improvement is because of the product mix changing. The healthcare RV shawl has, uh, is, is a better margin company. So as the ice cream also is a better, better margin. So, as Sameer told that in the dedicated unit, it, the, the entire uh, the COGS is passed through. So, it is it is through the product mix, uh, which is which is going on here. Okay, thanks. Uh, secondly, on the ice cream front, uh, just wanted to understand uh, how what could be our you know the full year revenue for ice cream say in FI twenty four. Uh, because that would be the first full year of our operation uh, post commissioning. And I believe the second unit that the expansion that you're looking at in the ice cream plant would be coming uh, more towards FY24 or would, would be more towards FY25? So, Ajay, uh, I can't give you specific numbers in terms of uh, the ice cream uh, turnover, etc., because it's a dedicated factory and, and uh, it's working for one particular customer for us. So, which means any number that we give out in terms of turnover can be directly attributable to that customer. However, uh, uh, the expansion, uh, as we mentioned before that, that uh, we are expanding uh, uh, from 15,000 tons to nearly 20,000 tons. Uh, and we are hoping that uh, we will be able to bring this online uh, by Q4 of this financial year. So, which means the jazz quarter, uh, which is the peak season for ice cream. Uh, the build-up for the ice cream season starts from Jan. Uh, we believe that uh, the new capacity will come online by then as well. Uh, in addition to that, we'll be able to ramp up the existing capacity uh, as well. So we're kind of excited about what the ice cream facility will contribute uh, in Q4 of this year. Okay, thanks. Thanks, Samir. Thanks, Samir. Uh, Thank you, Ajay. Thank you. We have the next question on the line of Akash Zaveri from Perpetual Investment Advisors. Please go ahead. Hi. Uh, good morning, Samir and team. Uh, am I audible? Yes, absolutely. How are you doing? Yeah. I'm good. I'm good. How are you? Um, extremely happy and satisfied uh, with the results. Congratulations uh, once again. Um, you know, just a few couple of quick questions. Uh, one was, um, the first one being uh, Mr. Plakat, who, uh, you know, his, his designation says, President uh, Manufacturing Excellence. Uh, could you just uh, throw some light on what exactly is this role and uh, you know how this would uh, progress? So, Akash, uh, as you know, we've, we've been growing at, at a rapid uh, scale and, and, and we've, we've tried to keep our management structure in sync with that growth. Uh, we now have 17 factories uh, spread across uh, the country. Uh, and uh, obviously, uh, we are expanding uh, both organically as well as inorganically. Uh, so the board realized that we probably needed some senior management bandwidth at the operating level uh, 
uh, and that's why uh, Sunil has been brought in. Uh, you know, before that, uh, just about a year ago, we brought in Sanjay as well, who is uh, heading the uh, Health and Wellness Division. Uh, so between Sanjay and Sunil, we believe that uh, we now have uh, enough uh, management, senior management bandwidth uh, to be able to take the company to the next level. In terms of specifics, uh, Sunil will be looking after operations for all the non-health and wellness factories. Okay, understood. Thank you so much for that. Uh, the second question being, um, the SOPA project, uh, if you could just throw some light on the timeline of completion, because I, I don't think that was mentioned in the investor presentation this time. Uh, sure, Akash. And uh, if it wasn't mentioned, it was probably a slip-up. Uh, but uh, we are expecting that we should be able to uh, commercialize this by Q1 of the next financial year. Uh, in fact, uh, 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 my uh, SDA is, is pointing out that we have mentioned it. It should be Q1 FI24. Uh, it's, it's mentioned in the investor presentation as well. Oh, sorry. I must have missed that. So okay. we, had, we had talked about it being implemented, uh, commercialized in Q4 of FY23 in our last investor presentation. Uh, yeah. if, you would have, if you would have noticed, uh, the scope of the project has expanded. Uh, we talked about phase one uh, last uh, investor presentation and we are now uh, looking at a larger scope and as a result, uh, the uh, pushback of the commercialization has happened by a couple of months and we should be able to start it by Q1 of FY24. Okay, got it. Thank you so much for that. Uh, the next question was, I uh, just wanted to uh, pick your brain about uh, the current deal pipeline uh, that you're seeing in the FMCG market. Uh, you know, are you, um, are you confident, like, you know, if you could just throw some light on that? Akash, I, 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 I'm not sure what I can discuss in terms of specifics. Am I confident? I can just give you an answer, yes. I mean, okay. I, I can't obviously discuss anything specific in terms of what we are doing. Uh, but uh, in terms of overall, I think contract manufacturing is, is, is quite an exciting place to be in. Uh, like, uh, I, I don't remember, somebody was mentioning, Abnish, I think, was mentioning that the last couple of quarters have been tough uh, for our customers. Uh, but in the medium term, as in the long term, uh, we all believe that FNCG should do well. It's the consumption story of it. Uh, and on the back of it, uh, we believe contract manufacturing should do as well. Uh, uh, very well. Uh, in terms of the short term for contract manufacturing, uh, because of these inflationary pressures and because of actually the slowdown, uh, we believe that some of the customers will look at uh, their manufacturing strategy very, very closely uh, to be able to try and get as much leverage as possible uh, through partners like us. Okay, got it. And um, uh, if you could just also throw some light on uh, the knitting shoe facility and its progress, how is that doing? Yes, uh, Akash. So this is actually uh, this is the China. This is uh, direct correlation of the China plus one strategy that we had talked about earlier. Uh, as you are aware, and have been traditionally manufacturing only leather shoes. Uh, we decided to get it into knitted shoes, or actually we were asked to get into knitted shoes by our customers because of the pushback from China. Uh, we believe that that can become a very strong and a very large uh, part of the business. However, we are taking baby steps. Uh, we've started our first factory uh, in uh, Tindivanam, uh, which is close to uh, Pondicherry. And uh, we're taking baby steps along that line, uh, but I'm quite confident that that business should grow uh, uh, substantially over the next few couple of years. Okay, and a couple of uh, quarters ago, I think you had mentioned about uh, pet food as well. So, has there been any progress on that? Uh, like, maybe you might hear something soon, or uh, uh, your thoughts on that? So, we're working with some smaller D2C brands on the pet food. Uh, nothing that I would actually uh, bring to the notice in terms of, of the financial figures, and I think it will it will continue to be uh, very very small. Okay. And uh, my last question uh, is regarding the effective tax rates that, uh, you know, which have come down. Uh, so I just want to understand the sustainability of the same and uh, the, the 40 crore deferred tax liability that we have. Uh, over how many years would this come down? Sorry, I, I missed that. Uh, uh, were you talking about the math? I, I was talking about the effective tax rates, which have come down, you know, historically, they've been about uh, 35, 40% which have now come down to 25%. So would you like to uh, find out about the sustainability of the same and also the default tax uh, liability that we have on the books? 
over how many years does this come down? Sure. So I'll ask Mayan to uh, uh, a question. Yeah. So I can't believe me, this question is giving me, uh, you know, sleepless night from the management and the board also. So what we have, we have seen and discussed uh, with our tax partners, we will be able to reduce uh, our tax uh, liability from next year when we will be uh, we will be exhausting all our match in the books and all our uh, previous uh, losses in in the in the one of the uh, so next year we will see the revision of the tax uh, tax uh, rates coming in here. And to give you an idea that. The new factories which uh, of uh, subsidies which we have we are we have done in ice cream is already at, at the lower rate, right? So uh, right. as as that as that progress, the effective tax rate will also come down on on that prospect also. Got it, got it. That answers all my questions. Uh, thank you so much, uh, Samir and team, and congratulations once again, and all the best uh, for the next quarter, the next year. Thank you, Akash. Thank you. We have the next question from the line of Akhil Parekh from Centrum Broking. Please go ahead. Uh, thanks for the opportunity. Uh, first of all, many congratulations from me to you and your team uh, for maintaining a very high growth trajectory. Uh, my first question is on the enabling resolution that we passed uh, recently of 300 crore of capital raising. Uh, any further update or timelines on that? Uh, hi, Akhil. Akhil, there have been no updates as yet. As in when something happens, we will come back uh, to it. Okay, okay. But is it, is it, uh, are you guys looking for any inorganic opportunity or is it just uh, for the organic growth? So, Akhil, we continue to look at both organic as well as inorganic opportunities. Uh, uh, you appreciate that, that, that still something happens, we can't uh, uh, announce anything. Uh, so, we are, we are continuing to do business as usual, yes. Okay, okay, sure. Fair enough. Second question is on the uh, the CAPEX plan that we have outlined in the presentation that the ice cream and the um, bath and soap bars and the health and wellness. So if I include all that CAPEX, that should help us achieve the sales target of 4,000 crore, right? I mean, so that's part of the 4,000 crore uh, uh, target line that we are trying to achieve by FI25. So we've given a guidance before uh, uh, Akhil on the uh, 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 the turnover and the capex uh, that we've announced is also the capex discussed before. Uh, we, we've not. Uh, so you're absolutely right. Yeah. Okay. Okay. And there's no change to the timeline in terms of the sales target. I mean, probably because of some slowdown in the markets and all because of that. So, Akhil, we're talking of two years out. I'm sure there will be something which will which will happen faster than expected, and something that will happen slower than expected. Uh, right now, at this stage, I have no material uh, to, uh, to what we what we've announced. Okay, okay, sure, fair enough. And lastly, on any new client additions that we have done uh, during the quarter. Uh, Akhil, uh, I think we we, uh, we we have addressed this question before. We continue to do that on a on a regular basis. I spoke about uh, DMART, Reliance. We talked about Tata Consumer, about uh, Staff Miller. Uh, we generally avoid giving specific updates to the market in terms of each and every customer that we sign. Uh, but obviously, uh, the sales team is 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 working hard to bring in uh, new businesses, either in form of new customers or in form of increased wallet share from Sure, sure. Fair enough. I, uh, uh, thanks for answering my questions and uh, wishing you best luck for coming quarters. Thank you, Rakhil. Thank you. We have the next question on the line of Faisal Hawa from AG Hawa and Company. Please go ahead. Yeah, so uh, Samir, uh, uh, what is the you know acquisitions and what are the kind of acquisition opportunities we get every quarter and you know how many do we really actively then pursue and what what is the you know uh, uh, generally what is the uh, end cap to sales that you you know ha uh, which which would, which would get you interested that's one and secondly uh, what is the you know unutilized land in most of our factories and you know you, you do you feel that uh, almost out of the 12 factories that we have most are uh, you know uh, equipped to have enough land for the next 10 to 12 years you know so where you can keep on expanding without any further uh, acquisition of land at least 
So fares are in terms of acquisitions, we basically, in terms of the strategy, we look at two acquisitions. Uh, one is we look at acquisitions which are consolidation, uh, which means uh, what we do is we look at acquiring some of our competitors uh, who are either uh, not willing to continue the business or are in unable uh, to continue the business. And that's one uh, type of acquisition that we look at. Uh, the second type of acquisition that we look at is a divestment from our principles. Uh, you know that we've, we've acquired the Geyser Shoal facility from Reckitt Ben Kieser, and before that, we have acquired the Gamu uh, facility from Reckitt Ben Kieser, and even before that, we acquired the factory from Unilever. Uh, so we continue to do that in terms of acquisitions. We look at uh, both, uh, which is consolidation, uh, which is competitors uh, bringing into like ATC beverages or AeroCare, and uh, divestment, uh, the examples that I just gave you. In terms of pricing, uh, there's no set formula for uh, the pricing, etc. Uh, you, 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 if, if anything, you would, you would agree that we are very uh, seized of our, our responsibility towards capital allocation, and we try to ensure uh, that we are not buying growth uh, just for the sake of growth. In terms of the second question uh, that you asked. And I've forgotten what the second question was. Yeah. yeah. Do you have enough land for you know further expansion in most of the factories that we have? Sure. So, Pedal, I I would say that we have. So there's there's never enough land, right? I mean, uh, if you look at the FNCG growth, and again, if you do leave the next couple of quarters, uh, there's a huge potential for our contract manufacturing. Uh, the volume growth, uh, other than the last two quarters in India, has been in in the range of between five to seven percent. Uh, as far as FMCG is concerned. And in addition to that, there is the uh, wallet share increase that happens between insourcing and outsourcing uh, for any traditional FMCG company. And third, this factor of consolidation where some of our competitors are unable or unwilling to grow. Given that, we've realized that we've been unable, and, and that's an evident from our numbers, disproportionately to what we had planned or what we had thought. So if you ask me, do we have enough land? Uh, while my answer might be today that yes, we generally tend to buy land with an eye for expansion. I also have to caveat that with the fact that even in a site like Hyderabad, which we acquired the first plot of land nearly 10 years ago, uh, and we acquired a substantially large plot uh, than what was originally required, we then ended up buying more land uh, just about two years ago. Uh, and if the expansion that we are currently uh, uh, doing there, including the soap bar project, uh, we might probably have to look at acquisition again. So it's a relative thing. Uh, but yes, in principle, we definitely try to acquire land uh, more than what is immediately required. Okay. Thanks a lot. Thank you, Sajar. Thank you. We have the next question on the line of Participants who wish to ask a question may press star and one on your touchstone telephone. Participants who wish to ask a question may press star and one on your touchstone telephone. We have no further questions. I would now like to hand the conference over to Mr. Vimal Solanki, Head Emerging Businesses and Corporate Communications for closing comments. Thank you, Mike and uh, season's greetings to all. Uh, we're pleased with HFL's uh, operational and financial performance uh, for this quarter and the half year ended uh, FY23. It has been in line with the company's targets and we are on track to meet our medium term and long term goals. We are confident that our customers will look at our track record of executing greenfield projects flawlessly and integrating the acquisition seamlessly. We are hopeful that they will continue to propel us towards our next goals. We strongly believe that long-term success is possible only by connecting economic growth with environmental stewardship and financial performance with social responsibility. As a socially responsible company, we will always strive to ensure that our ESG focus is embedded into our strategy and that our growth ambitions are well suited with sustainable development practices Consciously using the right approach. I take this opportunity to thank everyone for joining on this call. I hope we have been able to address all your queries. For any further information, kindly get in touch with us or 
strategic uh, growth advisors or investor relations uh, advisors. Thank you so much. Thank you. On behalf of Hindustan Foods Limited, that concludes this conference. Thank you for joining us, and you may now disconnect your lines.